I do. Uh, these old KCX75 crawlers and all um, got a little bit of an Achilles heel to them. So when they made them, the throttle was this dial. Which the dial was fine until the throttle motor, the stepper motor that's in there goes out. Because this little switch here is about 75 bucks. Okay, fine, we can troubleshoot with that. But where this goes is a motor that's way in the back that pulls on another cable that activates your actual throttle. A lot of people just jam a screwdriver in there. And honestly, that's what I was doing there for a while. But the problem is... I gotta be able to control it because you don't wanna just yank the screwdriver out and take the thing from full throttle back down to an idle. That starts doing engine damage. So a while back I rigged up this uh, turn lock style here. The problem is with that is when you start pulling on it, these kind of cables here have uh, no real uh, sheath in them and they're not jacketed so they end up binding up in the back. So I can pull on this all I want to and it ain't going anywhere. Also you can see that the engine stop cable is sitting up here too when i got the machine somebody had relocated the engine stop cable back here it's an emergency stop which usually this thing rests underneath the seat kind of down over in the side over here or on the outside edge where somebody can get to it if something happens to the operator so this is up here i don't know why it's not shutting off with the key except that the solenoid for that is uh very very expensive so i'm content to keep working with this this cable was 25 bucks um it was an okay test but i'll show you on the back where it's binding up i got a new solution and as much as i dislike amazon um 25 i can try this option to see what happens okay back here in the engine bay this is what we're looking at this is the original cable right here it's a nice jacketed sheathed cable it has a nice stud on it that comes into the actual throttle linkage right here that moves back and forth problem is is that this guy goes up to a cable or a stepper motor that is somewhere up in here behind this big 2,000 pound counterweight I can't get this 2,000 pound counterweight off because I got no way of actually getting it put taken off and put back on so we rigged this up the other day I'm keeping this original one I don't want to cut the original one because on the off chance that the stepper motor is good and a little control uh, switch up front is bad which i have not had the time to get into and diagnose i rigged this one up the other day and as you can see when it actuates it wants to bend and it will not pull all the way through so it's got a kink in here someplace i'm gonna pull this off today and what i found i found them anywhere from about 15 to 25 to 50 bucks on Amazon. This has got an actual push button in it, a ratcheting top, and as much as I dislike Chinese made stuff, I'll give it a chance. I'll give it a shot and we'll see what happens here. Because there's a really good little clevis here. What I don't like is that there's nothing sleeving the uh, cable back here where all the mud and grime is going to be, but we'll we'll give it a shot and see what happens biggest problem i'm going to have is being able to thread this thing through the bay and then finding a place to mount that up in the cab this is an 11 foot one my other cable that's in there right now is an eight foot one so if you guys watching and you're thinking about it just remember i've got the eight foot in there and it barely barely makes it so that's why i went ahead and ordered an 11. you could probably get by with a 10 but i'm gonna try to be creative about where i route this thing and a whole lot more scruples than where I was the last time. So let's get started. Before I get up in the cab, I'll set you underneath here. There's a big old screen access panel directly underneath the engine for changing your oil and so on. And this right here is where I ran that cable before and it runs up and over the bell housing area that goes into the hydraulic pump. But where I'm heading to is right back in there. You see a little bit of daylight there's a foam plug there that goes into the cab and it'll come out underneath the floorboard. So at that point, it gets kind of tricky when you get in underneath that floorboard to try to get it back up behind the seat because it does not like to go through that area. I've already got it unhooked up here, so I'm just gonna pull it out and uh, hope not get stabbed in the eye with this. And yeah, pretty free through there too. So this is the pathway they're gonna be running that new cable. 
and the new one is going to be uh, a lot longer see this cable right here is actually your emergency shutdown cable so I want to say in all reality purposes that would have probably run straight across here but thankfully somebody's thought enough to tuck it back up in here so that you can still get access to your oil pan and everything else without having to deal with the cable in place really wanted to clean it up good because honestly yesterday in the rain i had to go dig up my septic system and drain field so I was really making sure that everything was washed out of this thing and just the mud on the tracks is from walking across the yard this morning doesn't matter what you do with the track machine they're going to be nasty it's marketed as a throttle cable for an excavator here's one drawback i found already when you undo this guy here it won't fit over so if you're trying to slide it through a small space be ready for that uh like i said the motor for this darn thing and the cable set the motor alone is like 400 bucks the motor and the cable that stretches in here to operate this throttle and then the switch up front's probably 75 to 100 or better there too and getting to it good luck because it routes back in behind this counterweight and then it goes around again I think one of the mechanisms that powers it is up in the cab behind some hidden panel up in there. I haven't taken it apart, and if I do, you guys will certainly come along with me. <clears throat> now, for the other end of this sucker, here's how it operates. You got a squeeze button here that allows you to rotate, and it clicks into place. You can lock that throttle. Um, Nylock nut, which is nice. And then once you get through that you got a keyed wash uh, keyed cap and the keyed cap sets into a recess here depress this and it'll lift out and then you're looking at it's set in through here so if you want to you can pull this cable on through you can lift and pull that out through here this will untwist so you do have an option get this back where you guys can see it here and this threads in what I am somewhat impressed with is that this housing is actually die-cast aluminum or a different alloy of some stripe. And it's positioned for both sides, but it's only tapped on this one. So if you had to, you could tap this other end and get it in this way so it would operate in the opposite direction. You could bolt it in the opposite direction one way or the other. Simple enough just to turn the thing around. So, yeah, I am somewhat impressed that it is die-cast aluminum because when I looked at it on the internet, it looked an awful lot like plastic. So I'm going to tighten this back up here. And it passes down underneath this wad of wires and goes through the floor right down in there. So if I can follow the same path as the old one, then uh, I should be in decent shape. Last time I did this, I had every bit of this stuff pulled out <laughs> to get that cable strung through there. So it was a real pain in the rear. Let's see what happens this time. All right, so I got, I figured something out. I took one apart inside. I went in and took my throttle, my hand lever piece control apart to get the smallest part of the cable itself. And I've slid it up through a piece of fuel hose onto my old cable and in order to pull it through those gaskets and that foam block and everything i just taped it together and we'll see this is a little stiff but it's still flexible we'll see if it'll pull all the way through that should get this 11 foot cable pulled all the way in so we'll see what happens now that this is pulled out maybe and hopefully i can get in here and pull the new one all the way up through so let's see what happens Caught on something first down here. Yeah, still Start a little tight. Ah, there it goes. Good deal. For the first time, this is great. And there it is. Now we can go hook up the other end and go figure out a place to run all the excess cable. <clears throat> what, buddy? Does Casey work now? <clears throat> Casey works, yeah. Oh. Casey works real well. Daddy's just got to put a new throttle cable on it. Oh. Okay, you good with that? Yeah. All right. As far as how the clavis is going to fit in there, I think 
yep it'll fit around and it looks like the pin will go through the hole pretty well so we should be good there too all righty okay so here's what we ended up with the cable itself the actual actuation cable is a little bit too short so at the idle position it was not giving me enough room so it was actually off by about an inch and a half even at full adjustment here and full adjustment up here i ended up this is the fastest way i could get back into the game neighbors got a job pushing uh, fence lines out for a new pasture fence for them so ended up having to take a short little piece of iron bolted it into the linkage here and then used the supplied cable here this i've got the throttle locked at, well, at full throttle right now so here's where we're at you know this is what it looks like at full throttle I took the old cable the original factory wanted to sort of zip tie it up over here out of the way so that um, if one day i actually have the counterweight off heaven forbid and i can get in there and actually look at the original stepper motor then that'll be an option yeah so for right now this is full throttle pins are all in place underneath is zip tied up and basically like you saw a minute ago where it wraps up through here i'll get rid of this garbage from the old throttle linkage it passes through back here and rests very easily honestly i probably could have got away with a about a nine foot cable maybe a 10 foot cable this 11 is too long but uh, i'll take what i can get at this point so moving around step up here in a cab so here we are took a piece of the piece of metal that i had the other one the push pull put on trimmed an ear off turned it around and then that allowed me to run the bolts through here to mount this guy here in place so that's idle and that's going to be full throttle right there so we're back in business for now and it ain't great don't care much for it but hey if it'll work and get us back in the game at least keep a few more miles out of this old machine oh one thing i'm going to point out real quick on these uh cases I'll leave some of my trash out of the way here i ran into this problem the other day I uh, started having really low power out of the machine itself. I mean, you pick the boom up and you'd get near the top or, you know, max pull on the boom or the stick or the travel motor, and it's just bogging down. I mean, bogging down to the point where it's about to stall out. And it actually did stall out on me in one spot. I was like, what in the world is going on? I'm thinking, <coughs> thinking I got a brake locking up or something, but, I mean i've had brakes lock up on phil over here and i know exactly what that feels like and this didn't quite feel like brake locking up it was sure it was slowing down but it didn't feel like brakes locking up and it did throughout the entire hydraulic range i'm like what's going on here you know where the problem was that guy right there fuel filter fuel filter had worked itself just a little bit loose and it was plugged up so on these things pay attention to the fuel filter i got to reading online in a few places these azuzu 4 jb bj whatever ones whatever they are forgotten i'd have to climb up around and look and i don't really feel like climbing up on these muddy tracks right now but they set store by the fuel filter and there's two different versions of the fuel filter this is a napa 3386 and I forget what the Wix number is, but it's like put another three in front of there. It's like 33386. This is the short version. The short version fits in here quite nicely. The long version, which I have laying over here to the side, I'll show you in a second. It comes down to within a quarter inch of this boss right here. So yes, the tall version will fit, but here's the problem. This is a hard steel line. So in order to get the tall version in, you gotta loosen this nut, this one down here, you gotta loosen this one up here, and you gotta take the two housing bolts loose right here and pick the thing up, swing this entire system out a little bit, thread the filter on, and then swing it back in place. This is the tall version, 3393. So Wix number, I think it's a 33393 and a 33386. 
The other problem I see here is I don't see any provisions for water drainage. So like on a Baldwin or a Cummins filter, you'll probably have a little nipple on the bottom here that you can undo and drain the water out from time to time. So once I change that, and maybe you can see down in here too, there was all kind of trash floating around the bottom down there. I run off-road or tractor fuel in this thing mostly. And uh, yeah, watch where you get your fuel. It's like the old Caterpillar ones used to say on the fuel caps was, buy clean fuel keep it clean so <clears throat> one quick little thing to mention when you're down here in this belly pan area uh, right up in here <clears throat> on the right hand side if you're looking for the rear, rear of the machine looking in right up on this right hand side this is where your fuel lines pass through in through the bulkhead and go now directly above this is to the right of the cab and uh, I was welding in here the other day up on the top. This area is real bad to pack up with pine needles and little bitty sticks and leaves and all because it comes right in between the cab and the back fairings. So what happened was this packed up a little bit and a spark or two got down in here. And I actually had a small fire going in here. And as you can see, it got kind of the insulation or the uh, protective sheathing that's on these fuel lines a little bit. Did not get into the fuel lines themselves but just a worthy little point to look into there's a little tidbit for today got this back up and rolling so starting knocking down some trees for the neighbor over here so y'all take care <laughs>